योगेरा सूरत कुमार योगेरा सूरत कुमार योगेरा सूरत कुमार जय गुरु राया योगेरा सूरत कुमार योगेरा सूरत कुमार योगेरा सूरत कुमार जय गुरु योगीराम सूरत कुमार योगीराम सूरत कुमार योगीराम सूरत कुमार जय गुरु योगीराम सूरत कुमार योगीराम सूरत कुमार योगीराम सूरज कुमार जय गुरु राया भगवान श्री योगीराम सूरज कुमार की जाय सर्व योगीराम सूरज कुमार प्रणमस्तु So before we submit our evening prayer, we shall see how our Nama Sankirtan pleases Bhagwan. So much so that the devotees sometimes witness <coughs> Bhagwan happily dancing about and blessing people. This experience has been happening to some of the people in the ashram, even though we do not share it easily with people. But I came across similar experiences from some devotees. I was <coughs> transported to another world when I read that. I would like to share some of this with you people, so that we would know how much Bhagawan is pleased and how much He is blessing all of us. At one time, after Samadhi of Bhagawan, some people had come from Andhra Pradesh. They were all devotees of Sri Avadhu Tendra Swamigal, some sixty-five men and women, all devotees, had come to Thiruvannamalai. They came to our ashram, they wanted to do Arunachala Shiva Mantra and also Om Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram. And after coming here, they saw how much we are chanting Bhagwan's Nama, Yogi Ram Sridhama. So they offered to do that also. They wanted to do Nama Sapta. That was the seven days. They have to do this Nama Sankirtanam. In fact, they extended two more days and they stayed for nine days. And after that, there was one particular devotee, a lady devotee, who was very enthusiastic, very ecstatically singing the name. And she used to come to us, hear stories about Yogi Ram Kumar Bhagwan. She was very much drawn to him. So other times she would dance and sing. But after two or three days, she fell sick, developed fever, a very high fever of 105 degree. She was unable even to get up. And naturally, she was in abject misery. And then she began to appeal to Yogi Ram Kumar, chanting his name, Yogi Ram Kumar, I have come to your feet to do the singing of Nama Sankirtan, which you advocate. See what has happened to me. I am unable to get up. I want to participate all these days, singing your varied names. They are also your now, your names. I want to sing them all and dance. But just see in what pathetic condition I am in. Please do something. Please cure me out of this, so that I could joyfully join once again 
And if I don't deserve this kind of grace from you, you can still do something for me. You can take me upon your feet. Let me come to you. I would like to die and be with you. Please do that. And she was crying her heart out, begging, praying, and chanting his name as much as she could. And then, after a few hours of crying out, suddenly she saw Yogi Ram Sarutmar Bhagavan appearing before her, sitting by her side with such tender expression of love on his face. And then he started to fan her. He was fanning her for some time with such radiant joy on his face and a tender expression of love. And then he disappeared. The next day morning she had no idea when she fell asleep, but when she woke up there was no fever, there was no weakness even of fever left. And all she could feel was such flow of energy and enthusiasm. She got up, she very cheerfully began to participate in the Nama chanting and she went around telling us all. And I happened to read it again after a few years now and I felt equally ecstatic when I read that. And of course there was another devotee who also shared his experience. He said that when we, we were all singing Yogi Ram Saratma Nama the last few days, when they were here, he saw literally Yogi Ram Saratkumar sitting by his side, clapping his hand to the tune of our singing, so happily that he was so scared even to turn around lest he should disappear. He said, I saw it with my eyes. Bhagwan sitting by our side, clapping his hands and singing with us, and seeing every one of us by way of blessing. And there was a third man who also reported something like that. He said, I too have had such an experience and I can vow for the truth of it. This is Satyam, he said, that we were all singing his Nama together, happily, cheerfully, ecstatically. He saw Yogi Ram Sarutkumar going round and round, all of us, dancing sometimes and sometimes raising his hand and blessing people. It is happening even now when we are singing. Sometimes you can really see him walking about, blessing people or dancing. You believe it or not, it's a truth. And so let us remember this every time we sing the name together. He is very, very happy, dancing ecstatically and blessing every one of us, blessing our prayer also. So we shall submit our prayer, Bhagwan, beloved Bhagwan. Bhagwan's Divya Nama, Yogi Ram Sarutma, we have been chanting twice a day with all of us together. Of course, other times the Nama is going on in the ashram, but these are the two times all of us gather together to chant this powerful, tremendous, divine Nama. Once, one Usha Jaikar, a devotee of Bhagwan, had gone to Sanadi Street house, she being the wife and mother of a household, was naturally worried about some of the problems. At that time, Pat came, a declaration from Bhagwan. He said, when there is Nama in the heart, 
when there is rama in the mind why should there be worry as though the worry and rama cannot exist together which means we have to convert every worry into a nama the nama is self fulfillment the nama gives us a feeling of fulfillment there will be no more complaint in the mind so this is how they have all bhagwan and sage uh, saints had always chanted the name they they had the sense of fulfillment all the time there was no room for any worry or agitation and nama would do everything that is needful there's another story about people who belong to another religion but taken to yogi ram sridhar nama chanting with faith they could not think of any other god any other name now this family of kurush sidwa parsi people they are living in an apartment in bangalore when mr sidwa had gone out to another place pune his wife and children were staying alone in the apartment and the night they had gone to bed early morning 5 o'clock when anahita kurush sidwa's wife got up to her horror and dismay she found the whole house filled with the gas the cooking gas she knew suddenly only the day before a new cylinder had come and the cook who came the previous day evening had left it without closing she was horrified and she remembered suddenly next to the kitchen is the puja room where the lamp is kept burning all the time all the 24 hours so she rushed there and to her absolute delight and relief the lamp was still burning and the lamp and the kitchen cooking gas did not connect You see, there is no door to the kitchen. Adjacent to the kitchen is the puja. How could they not connect? The whole place was filled with the stench of this gas, and there was no explosion, and the lamp was still burning to the relief of everyone. So this is Yogi Ram Sarath Kumar. His magic. the magic of his name the glory of the divine so this nama will be protecting us also all those people who are chanting this name all those people who have faith yogi ji said to usha jaykar if there is nama in the heart if there is nama in the mind why should there be worry he also added some time later there should be faith faith in the heart faith in the name the mind that chants the mantra must have faith in the mantra so we should keep this faith and appeal to bhagwan bhagwan beloved bhagwan i just wanted to share a particular event that took place when i was with bhagwan today is the pradosham day from 4:30 to 6 o'clock till 6:30 shiva lord shiva chose to dance between the two horns of nandi deva so this reminded me of a particular incident which happened when i went and sat before bhagwan many people would have heard it from me several times before but it is worth remembering again and again because this must be our sadhana 
I went in search of Bhagwan that particular day, the day of Arudra Darshan, and I found the door locked, Sanadhi Street house locked. I rushed immediately to the temple, and as soon as I entered, I saw Bhagwan seated on the one side, on the right side, under an Ashwatha tree, under a peepal tree. There was a crowd, as usual, in front of him. And then I stood at a distance for some nod from him. When he made it, immediately I came running and sat in front of him, joined the crowd. I, at that time I noticed something else also. Crowds and crowds of people were entering the temple and going straight inside because that was the day they would do Abhishekam to Lord Nataraja and there would be special decoration and procession also. So lots and lots of people, crowds of them were going inside straight, they would not look this side or that side. It made me think, I felt pain because I thought Sri Nataraja has taken a human form sitting in flesh and blood right in front of me and we are able to interact with him, we are able to look at him. We get his darshan, sparshan and sambhashan. And uh, without realizing, without knowing this, these people are going straight there inside. Why would they do this? Why wouldn't they realize it? And then suddenly it reminded me it was the day Lord Nataraja chose to dance, his cosmic dance, for the sake of his intimate disciples and for his divine consort, Parvati. And suddenly, because I looked upon him as Lord Shiva, I blurted out, Bhagwan, today is Arudra Darshan day, the day Lord Shiva chose to dance. Will this Shiva dance for us today? Before I knew, I said it out. I had no idea I was going to voice it out. I used to be afraid even to breathe loudly in his presence. But that day, somehow, something stirred in the depths and this question came out before I realized. And then, of course, naturally, I was very frightened. I thought I was being very impertinent in asking and that Bhagwan might choose to send me away. But surprisingly, what happened was just the reverse. Bhagwan gave me a straight glance and said, why not? I never expected this beautiful reply from him. And then I took it very literally and thought Bhagwan was going to dance, the cosmic dance of Lord Shiva. I was going to have a wonderful chance of witnessing that. So my mind was completely absorbed in that. And some conversation Bhagwan was making with those people around, and suddenly, there was a wild breeze. And then, in the breeze, naturally, the leaves of that peepal tree were moving. This way and that way, sway. And Bhagwan's voice boomed. Devki, see, Shiva is dancing. I looked up to see only these leaves moving, swaying in the wind, and I was thinking, my God, what does he say? It's only the leaves moving in the breeze. Haven't I seen it one hundred times before? What of this? Oh, he is trying to say something, okay, even if you don't understand, I will accept it. He just kept quiet, and then he continued his conversation, little conversations with those people around, and then again I was absorbed in the thought, that he was going to dance. And suddenly, again he boomed. He said, Devki, look. Look at the sky. And I looked up. The sky was deep blue, pure deep blue. There was not a single cloud anywhere. And in the background of this deep blue, Akash, the sky, three white birds, in a certain formation, we are gliding gracefully. It was a beautiful scene. I remembered immediately 
Had Ramakrishna seen this, he would have gone into Samadhi. Because I had read about it. It was so beautiful, but then I did not get the point. I was just thinking, okay, it's so beautiful. What of it? What is Bhagavan saying? Shiva is dancing. But suddenly I felt Bhagavan was trying to make a point and I was not getting it. But then I could do nothing about it. And in the meantime, there was a lady who brought a carrier and she said, Bhagavan, today is a very special day, the day for Lord Nataraja. I remembered you and I made kali for you, the food loved by Lord Nataraja. Will you please take it? She had brought a plant and leaf also. Shri Yogiji said, okay, put the leaf here. He pointed out a place next to him and then he called me by a gesture to come near. He made me sit there in front of the leaf and he told that lady, you serve her whatever you have brought. I was so afraid because that lady had brought food for Bhagwan, and Bhagwan was asking her to serve to somebody so ordinary like me. What would she think? I looked up at her, but there was still a smile lingering on her face. There was no change of expression at all. She instantly knew Bhagwan's playing a leela, was making a point, and then she served as cheerfully as she would do, as she would do to Bhagwan. <coughs> That was again a lesson to me. And then, after she served the kali and sabji, Bhagwan said, Devki, start eating. I felt a little uneasy because there were so many people around and it was a temple. But then Bhagwan was saying it, I had no choice and I started. Just when I was about to start, I saw a millipede just Half, feet, half foot away from the leaf, coming very fast. It's one of those black things with the yellow dots on either side and it moves very fast. You can see it in plenty in the rainy season. And I used to be disgusted with the very sight of it. And that was coming straight towards the food. And suddenly my focus shifted completely. I was looking at it and my fear that it, it would climb over my food and I wouldn't be able to eat it and I might even vomit. I forgot the presence of Yogi Ram Saratma. I forgot the idea behind the whole Leela, the demonstration. I forgot Shiva. I forgot Arudra Darshande. I forgot everything else except that uh, millipede that was coming fast towards me only the fear held me. And suddenly, Yogiji's voice boomed with a Devki. See, Shiva is dancing. And I knew what he was saying because immediately, because I was focusing on that, and in that one fraction of a second, something stirred the depths of my being. And my view, my focus changed completely. I saw, believe me, it's a truth, I saw the beauty and the grace of the movement, the dance movement of Lord Shiva <coughs> in that disgusting creature, or the creature that, that was disgusting to me before that. Just for a fraction of a second, he knew that I knew, and I knew that he knew that I knew, and suddenly, he stopped it and then he said, Devki, Shiva is dancing all the time. Learn to see it. I understood the point. It was a very beautiful, not just an idea, the truth, a lofty truth behind the whole scene. The demonstration was so, <coughs> so arranged, so beautifully to make this point that Shiva is dancing. Every movement, every movement that you see in nature, 
is Shiva's dance movement. This is what I understood that day. What a beautiful way of teaching something so lofty. How can anybody forget it? So today is the day to recall this great demonstration, this great Leela. Of course, after that, just at that moment, Lord Nataraja chose to come out, well decorated, and he was going in procession, and the devotees followed him, and Swami got up in one jump. He followed the devotees with raised hand in benediction. What a strange scene it was. Nataraja was moving in the front, and the devotees were moving behind, and Swami was blessing all those devotees from behind. I started to follow him, but whenever he turned, I would go into hiding because if he should see me and wave his hand for me to go away, I had to do it immediately and I would miss his darshan. So the full procession came one round and suddenly he was, I found him missing. And then I turned this side and that side and then I found in a corner that there was nobody at all he was dancing the cosmic dance of Shiva, physically. Only for a few seconds it lasted, but I had my fill of the cosmic dance of Shiva that day and also the truth behind it. So, such is the power of our Bhagwan, and let us appeal to his generosity and divine love we know that it's only a small movement from his hand and everything would change about the world. So we appeal to him, Bhagwan, even this virus now dancing its destructive way into the world is only a movement from your hand. Now we appeal to you to make another movement, a moment of grace and beauty to change this completely, free this entire humanity from this destructive scene. We, we all know that chanting the Nama is one thing, writing the Nama is also equally powerful or if not more powerful. It has been a practice in the ashram and outside to write the name. Bhagwan was also fond of that. He used to encourage us to write. Now there are many satsangs in different places and they have also taken to this practice of writing the name and they have found out how valuable it is, how helpful in solving our problems. There is one, Sri Anandaraj, a long-term devotee, been coming from the days of Punnai tree, the whole family, father, mother, sister. <coughs> he is running a satsang in Madurai and they have this practice of Likita Japa, the Nama writing. He was giving the Nama sheets to all those students who were visiting the satsang from the families of devotees. And then after some time, he asked everyone how they benefited from that. One boy said his handwriting was very bad, that people were making fun, and he was going through many difficulties because of that. But after he started to write the Nama, his handwriting has improved greatly that all those people who were saying that have stopped it, who were mocking, have stopped it and there's a new look of appreciation in their eyes. Another girl said that her parents were always fighting at home. There was so much disharmony and a lot of noise and she was unable to study in peace. But after she started to write the Nama, now the, there is less and less fight, 
between her parents and it has almost come to a stop and there is more peace and harmony at home that she is able to study better. <clears throat> there was another boy who said his father was jobless and they were suffering because of that. But after he started to write the name, within a month or two, his father got a job with good salary and because of which so many benefits they have attained and there is more relaxation than tension at home. So each one came with sort of problem. So in the ashram also we give notebooks to people, we give papers and armor sheets also to people who come here and write and we see how it benefits us in our everyday life. Now Bhagavan has said, those who chant the Nama, they do not have to pray separately. Nama is consciousness, all pervasive, all powerful, all knowing, consciousness, the supreme consciousness. So there is nothing it does not know. In fact, your very thoughts occur in the consciousness. And so the Nama instantly knows all your thoughts and prayers. And Nama will do the needful. If in the beginning it's very difficult to catch the name, but somehow you persist and then you take to this chanting and writing the Nama, after that Nama catches you and Nama begins to run your life. This is the experience of many devotees. Even though there is no need to make a prayer, the Nama knows everything, it is a Supreme and it is Nami Himself. We shall make our prayer for our own satisfaction, the mind being what it is. Bhagwan, beloved Bhagwan, 